Hi everyone, this is Andrzej Leszczyński, Polish voiceover artist. You can call me just Andrew if you're not very familiar with Polish pronunciation. Why am I taking your precious time today? Well, for many years I have been a sports shooter, interested in guns, their history, how they work, and how they have been used for centuries to fight for freedom. Now, European citizens, your freedom is about to be banned. How? Terrible and outrageous acts of terror in France this year caused many people died and injured, maybe for life. Psychological effects are hard to measure, we are no longer safe from terrorists. Which actually we already know, not only from 9-11. These kinds of things happened before in France, in Europe, in the 60s. And what modern European politicians are about to do with this case? What do they want to do to prevent future acts of terror? Well, they think that taking away from us our legally possessed guns is the solution. What European politicians decided to do to prevent the future acts of terror in Europe? Well, just five days after 13th November, they decided to... They decided that stricter rules should be implemented in gun law to ban certain semi-automatic firearms which will not, under any circumstances, be allowed to be held by private persons. Well, if you are not a sport shooter or never had a gun in your hand, you might not be able to understand what a semi-automatic gun is. Well, let me explain. This is for example classic shotgun, Mossberg Persuader. Remember to always check your gun if it's safe, if there's no ammunition inside. So we take a look, it's empty, we can fire a blank round, there's nothing happening. What is a single operated gun? Let me show you. First what we do, we take for example two or three rounds and put that into the magazine. Can I shoot already? No. First thing I have to do is to reload. Then the first round goes into a chamber and then we can shoot. The range is hot. But to fire another round, what do I have to do? I have to manually reload again. And then I can shoot. And the range is clear. Now, what is the difference between this gun and this semi-automatic CZ-75 that is about to be banned? As you can see, the chamber is clear, there's no bullet inside. We can make the slide go forward and check. First thing you have to do is to put the magazine inside. Can you fire already? No. What you have to do is make reload and then the first round goes into a chamber. Then I'm going to take a shot. Did you see what happened? The slide went backwards, extract the empty case and then took another one to the chamber. So semi-automatic gun is the one you don't have to reload after each shot. You can shoot, shoot, unless you are empty in the magazine. And then, after you are empty, you take the magazine out, check the chamber and you are safe. This is how the semi-automatic weapon operates. You then have to reload each time you fire. This is all about semi-automatic. And this is a weapon that all the fuss is all about. This is a real Kalashnikov or AK-47. This gun is also semi-automatic. Every time I shut, I don't have to reload. This is a magazine, empty chamber. We can check first. It's empty. We clip the magazine. Get the first round into a chamber. And then we can shoot. As you could see, I didn't have to reload after each time. And this is also a semi-automatic gun. 
And this is another gun, very popular in Europe, in sport shooting also. This is AR-15, which is a civilian version of M4, M5, M16. It also operates a semi-automatic. There's an empty chamber up here. We take a first round in the chamber and then in a semi-automatic mode we can shoot. After the last shot we check the chamber and it's free. What is very important about these guns, you now know what is semi-automatic, but on civilian market there are no automatic guns, which means firing more than one shot with one trigger pull. I can take a one shot and then I have to lift the trigger and shot again. There is no automatic weapons that terrorists had in Paris and in many places all over the world. So now when you understand the semi-automatic concept of a gun that you don't have to reload each time you fire, you can easily realize that we are talking about banning about 95% guns in the world, which are now available for low obedience citizens. But what else can we read in the European official statement? There is a little official data on the types of firearms circulating in the EU. Weapons illegally used and trafficked and criminal offenses and activities involving civilian firearms. Well, I don't know how about Brussels or France or Germany, but in Poland all legal gun owners, doesn't matter if it is for self-defense, sport shooting, hunting or collecting, are carefully x-rayed by police before they can be authorized for gun ownership. Every single firearm is registered and assigned to a certain owner whenever it's about to be sold and change the owner. First time a firearm is sold in Poland, three casings shot from this gun go to police vault so they can be tested in case of criminal use in the future. We are also obligated to keep our firearms in vaults of certain class to prevent access of unauthorized people. Believe me, here in Poland we do know what is going on with our guns. What European Commission also says? The possession of the most dangerous firearms, even if they are deactivated, will no longer be allowed. Take a good look at the ammunition. All these rounds can be lethal, of course, but it's not the case of a caliber, but the person who is shooting. A shooter. Is he a bad guy or a good guy? And remember, guns doesn't shoot by themselves. It's always a human being that pulls a trigger. Illegal gun black market will always exist and can be stopped by taking away legally possessed guns from low obedient citizens. It will only cause us more vulnerable and helpless against criminals. Let's pretend for a while that all those new rules have been implemented. There are no semi-automatic or barely any type of guns allowed on civilian market. And then, mysteriously, another massacre happens. How would you explain that, European commissionaries? But wait a minute, there is a certain example that can be used in this case. Drugs. Thanks to severe law, they are illegal and we can't buy them anywhere. Can't we? Or maybe we can. But is it the first time we are trying to do something about guns to make our world safer? No. Fortunately, or maybe this is not the best word here, we have another example. Yes, January 1997. United Kingdom gun ban. Ah yes, it was all about semi-automatic. So, dear Commissioner Elżbieta Binkowska, who probably never had a gun in your hand, consider this and try a little internet research by typing these words on your web search. Violent crime increase in Great Britain after a gun ban. Well, it's time for me to finish now. I hope I'm talking to reasonable politicians in European Parliament. Maybe I'm naive, but I still believe that there are some left. I would be able to forgive you actions like famous standardizing shape and size and color of a banana. I heard lately that you're about to talk about candlelight, fire and size. These are of course outrageous examples of wasting of our European money. But more outrageous thing you want to do is leaving us European citizens helpless against terrorists. Try to take illegal guns from them, not the legal ones, from us. But there is still hope. In official statement after tragic events in Paris, we can read Firearms used by terrorists on 13th of November in Paris were produced in former Yugoslavia for the army of that country. The manufacturing plant was situated in the city of Kragujevac. It has been confirmed by CEO of that plant, Miloj Kobzakovic. 
Two days after attacks in Paris, Serbian Ministry of Internal Affairs sent serial numbers of firearms found in capital of France during attacks and straight after. I think that there was seven, maybe eight automatic Kalashnikovs, CEO Bzakovic says. These were Yugoslavian versions of Russian automatic assault rifles AK-47. Firearms found in Paris were produced in the late 80s and went to former Yugoslavian army depository. It's almost sure that these guns went to black market because of the war in former Yugoslavia in the 90s. That also means that firearms used by terrorists have never been present on any legal civilian market. This was Andrzej Leszczyński speaking from Poland to you. Thank you for your time.